Hello, and welcome back to Picks and Portraits. In the past, we've looked a lot at video stores, video rental stores, retail. We've seen the golden age, the 80s and 90s, as well as the decline, 2005, up until basically today. Now, because of where I am located, my own nostalgia, and what is widely available, and this has been almost exclusively North American, uh, or just American, <laughs> but today, we're going global. We are going to be looking at video stores from around the world. Originally, I was just going to focus on rental stores, but limiting it to just physical rental stores was very restrictive, so we will be including some video retail stores, as well as regional video streaming services, <laughs> which is still rental. We are spanning decades here, different eras. Uh, even though they had stores all over the globe, we are also going to be avoiding Blockbuster. Again, we have a whole video on the dying days of video stores that is very Blockbuster heavy, and Blockbuster wasn't that great. <laughs> it has come to represent this period and idea. I have nostalgia for it too, but there were many other chains and independently owned stores offering better stock, a better experience, and so we are going to be focusing on them instead. Obviously, for those of a certain age, this is going to be very nostalgic, and what I find really exciting about nostalgia, triggering nostalgia, is revisiting something I grew up with and have kept with me all these years, but instead revisiting something adjacent to that, something unknown but still vaguely familiar, and I think, regardless of where you grew up or rented video, something here should activate that. So please board, hop on in. <laughs> Our first stop will be Down Under, Australia. Heading back to 1984, we have Video Sam working around an American theme, Uncle Sam. One ad featuring 99 cent rentals and a package that would give you a free VCR uh, or VHS player. You see this a lot around this time. It was so early for home video that many video stores uh, were either selling equipment or renting it, uh, or in this case, just giving it away on some kind of contract. From the research that I have done, Video Easy seems to have been the most popular Australian video store chain. This was founded in 1983, and by the end of the decade had over 100 locations. They also expanded into New Zealand around this time, which we will get into in a bit. A lot of Video Easy's marketing played off of its name. It's that easy. The choice is easy. Easy does it. In 1993, they launched a guaranteed promotion where if they didn't have the title you were looking for in stock, you would get to rent it free <laughs> when it was. That's one thing that certainly isn't missed about rental stores, not being able to watch the movie you want to because someone else has it out. Heading into the new millennium, we get the shift to DVD. That dominates a lot of the marketing. In 2003, Easy Video sold the majority of their corporate owned stores, meaning the company was operated uh, using the franchise model. I found footage from 2006, 2007. Uh, the first bit you're seeing here, is a glorified slideshow, but offers a great glimpse into what stores actually look like, rather than sets uh, that were used for commercials. It's interesting seeing how each location differs from the others. Uh, one is a combination Pizza Hut. <laughs> there are South Park, uh, Simpsons, other cartoon characters on the walls of another. Personally, I love seeing the game sections. From the same source, there is a video walk around of an Easy Video's game section uh, that is a window into a time that I remember very fondly. This is a period of rental that I find just absolutely fascinating. I have a ton of nostalgia for it. I know the 90s is what often gets romanticized uh, most for video and game rental. I have those memories too. I lived it, but for me, there is just something about the mid-2000s that I love, uh, the peak before the downfall. We have seen this in other videos, but 2010 was the year it became pretty clear that this concept was dying. This news report from that year highlights the issues facing the industry, mainly piracy and the rise of streaming. It also shows the ways video stores sought to compete uh, with their own video on demand services and these rental kiosks that we will be seeing much more of. A similar news report from 2014 shows things only getting worse. Uh, here we are introduced to another chain, Civic Video, as well as the Aussie streaming service Stan. Three years later, stores still struggling. Another one of Easy's competitors, Network Video, is featured. We also see Easy's kiosks and how some franchisees try to diversify their business with movie-related memorabilia like Funko Pops. 
Another of Easy's local competitors was Video City, who had this very catchy jingle. Good times, where can you go? Video City. <laughs> I found this great commercial from either 1998 or 99 that features a lot of Disney characters appearing alongside a mother shopping uh, with her daughter. I'm not sure if uh, these appearances were licensed <laughs> or not. I also tracked down this news report from 2019 on the closing of the last Video City. The reporter makes a joke about how uh, it being busy <laughs> was a rare sight as they were liquidating their stock. Throughout the 2010s, I visited many stores, uh, many video stores in their final days, so this is a familiar sight. Fear not though, there is at least one video store still left in Australia, Melbourne's Picture Search Video. Think of this more like a boutique shop rather than the video stores of old. Uh, I feel like this approach is the only way a uh, rental store like this can function. Heavily curated, catering to a more niche uh, customer base, more obscure films, uh, or even formats. They're still renting VHS. And uh, yeah, still open as of 2022. A short trip away in New Zealand, we have another chain, another catchy jingle, United Video. I managed to find a commercial from the golden era uh, circa 1990-91, <laughs> Days of Thunder was the movie of the month. I also found this clip from New Zealand Today, which as I understand it is a sort of uh, satirical news show like The Daily Show. Uh, we see the state of one of the last United Video stores in 2019. Similar to what we've seen in Australia, the number of United Video locations has gradually been thinning out, especially in 2021, and there are currently less than 10 remaining. Our next destination is Japan. Not gonna lie, I was pretty disappointed that there isn't a whole lot available on Japanese video stores, uh, at least in terms of video. Considering video rental is still comparatively very popular there, you would think that there would be more. Uh, I did learn though that their most popular chain is Sutaya, uh, which also sells movies, uh, offers books, and audio formats as well. They have a famous store in the Dakiyama district in Tokyo that is absolutely gorgeous. It's got tons of style, fashioned like an uh, old archive or library, but uh, yeah, not a whole lot out there uh, for video rental in Japan, unfortunately. Landing in Hong Kong during the 1990s, we run into the same issue. The market was there, but it just hasn't been preserved. I managed to track down this great promo for VCD, or Video CD, which was a format uh, similar to DVD that was more popular in Asian countries. In terms of video rental, KPS Video Express was a popular chain that operated from 1981 until it collapsed and was purchased by Blockbuster in 1998. There is a ton of information available on KPS, but not a lot of media. We are lucky to have uh, this receipt though. One of the movies is Once Upon a Forest, which would place this around 1993 or 94, uh, if it was rented when that film was first released. I also found this very sad photo from 1998 featuring a man standing outside a KPS after its closure. Welcome to Nigeria's Alaba International Market, the biggest electronics market in the country. Alaba Market was founded in 1977, and it was here in the late 1980s where Nigeria's first home video trading took place. This was a period known as the video film era, and most early tapes were television recordings with films being released uh, still in theaters traditionally, but with the advent and adoption of home video, films began being released straight to video. Like India and Bollywood, Nigeria has its own thriving film industry, Nollywood. <laughs> Researching this uh, sent me down a rabbit hole that led me to the straight-to-video production company Great King Films. This was created in 2006 by director Izu Azubaik and is the equivalent to B uh, or even C movies. These are very low budget and just completely off the rails. Shot on mini DV, uh, subject matter, drugs, sex, violence. <laughs> I've only seen the trailers, uh, but these are a lot of fun and have an energy that's uh, difficult to put into words, uh, but borders on just you know, pure insanity. Uh, this is great stuff. The streaming home for Nollywood and uh, other African films is Afronali. The service launched in 2011 and allows users to stream movies as well as trailers and music videos. 
Kicking off the European leg of our tour is Ireland's Extra Vision. Though it was founded in 1979, not a whole lot of material exists up until the late 2000s. Uh, most of this is actually from their official YouTube channel. We've seen this before, rental shops diversifying into not only video sales, but also games, music, uh, even cell phones. Uh, this student film was made in 2008 by Paul Goldsbury that offers a look behind the scenes of uh, working at an Extra Vision. In addition to the usual tasks like stocking shelves, serving customers, we also see the inner processes, filing, checking returns. Uh, I'm always so grateful <laughs> for this kind of stuff. Uh, I worked in games, a similar industry, but it's all but vanished, so it's great uh, that it has been preserved like this. Extravision changed ownership a few times during its lifespan. From 1996, it was owned by Blockbuster, who sold it in 2009 to Birchall Investments but the company would go bankrupt two years later. It was purchased in 2013 by Hilco. That name should sound familiar to those who watched our last video on retail graveyards, as they also bailed out media retailer HMV. In Ireland, ExtraVision would be merged with HMV. As we saw in Australia, dwindling sales led to the adoption of automated kiosks, here known as ExtraVision Express. Also, like we saw in Australia, ExtraVision was not long for this world. Times were tough in 2016, and despite apparently telling staff their jobs were safe, ExtraVision shut down overnight, and a lot of people were out of work. In France, video stores are called video clubs. Like Japan, I was shocked it wasn't easier to find media related to French video clubs, given how popular. The medium of film is there. Uh, the only store I could find substantial information on was Video Future. Many different rental shops have attempted to grow with the times and failed. Video Future is one of the exceptions. It started as a video club in 1982 and operated as such until the late 2000s. Uh, we know what happened next. Kiosks, the rise of streaming, but where Video Future differs is that they successfully adapted to the new technology. In 2013, they launched La Box, a video-on-demand service that gave users access to thousands of shows and movies available for purchase and rent. Uh, video Future has since stepped beyond delivering entertainment, and today they are an ISP serving isolated areas of France. So, way to uh, go <laughs> and grow with the times. Rounding out our trip through Europe is Spain's oldest video store, which I believe is still open, Video and Stan in Barcelona. This has been in business since 1980. The uh, first thing I'm sure you're noticing is the rounded shelves. It creates a really interesting effect. Video and Stan boasts the largest collection of movies in Spain, nearly 45,000, 8,000 of which are on VHS, as they had never been available on any other format. They also have a cafe and a screening room, uh, which to me makes more sense in terms of diversifying uh, than tablets or phones. Yeah, video and stand. Very cool looking store. We are going to be wrapping things up by heading back over the pond, uh, heading home for me here to Canada. Canada is a bilingual country, English and French. Most provinces or regions are Anglophone, um, but there is a lot of great stuff out of Quebec, the French province, so we are going to be looking at both. Uh, full disclosure, je parle pas français, mon français est terrible, but I am able to follow some of these. Uh, I found some great news reports on the new home video craze. The earliest brings us to 1982, where some astronomical amounts are thrown out for VHS. Hundreds of dollars, uh, the tapes were obviously expensive, but the people running these stores had to acquire the rights to them, uh, a license, but still, wow. Home video watching is presented as something only for the wealthy at that cost, not surprising. The other early report I found brings us to Montreal's Club Video, which not only had a large physical selection that you could browse, but also catalogs where customers were able to find information about the films. That same year, National Video ran this ad, promoting their deal, where you could rent a VCR, a movie, and a free booklet uh, and popcorn for just $10 a night uh, on weeknights. 
As we've seen, many retailers transitioned into automated kiosks after their primary business dwindled, but the video machine started as an ATM for movies. Uh, this commercial is from 1989 and stars someone named Paul Newman who gives their recommendation, the bit being that he is named after a famous movie star. Uh, put your credit card in, movie comes out. Uh, pretty crazy <laughs> that this was 20 years ahead of the trend. In 1987, Jumbo Video was founded. They had a gimmick where you could get free popcorn to eat while you browse tapes. Personally, <laughs> I have a ton of nostalgia for Jumbo, but unfortunately there is not a whole lot available. I did find some ads, the clay stop motion one you're seeing here, and a commercial starring Rick Moranis from a couple years later. Also a clip, a news clip from 2014 of a maritime location closing. Uh, pretty much all Jumbo locations have closed, but there is actually still <laughs> one Jumbo video left in London, Ontario. In 2004, Jumbo had merged with the Quebec-based chain, the Super Club Videotron, which there is a lot of media available for, starting with this overview from 1989, the year the chain was founded. Clowns, French-Canadian clowns introduce us to the concept of video rental. They dance through the aisles, show off the rental equipment, the video game section. Uh, Videotron also offered music, cassette tapes, CD rentals, Throughout the 2000s, they had this ad campaign featuring two employees, a rotating cast of employees in uh, some kind of humor situation, announcing different promotions, releases. Moving ahead a little further in time, the commercials start taking the form of uh, short little films with credits and title screens. The last bit of video store related media from Videotron that I could find at least is from 2015, uh, which is pretty late compared to a lot of what we've looked at. Uh, aesthetically, it's so crisp and clean that I feel like if the industry didn't radically change slash collapse, that this would be reflective of what it would still look like today. And yeah, that's about it for today. It was very difficult sourcing this. I did my best, but there is not a lot of media available for many countries, so let me know what I missed. If I left your country out, I am sorry. <laughs> Believe me, I tried to find as much as I possibly could, uh, but feel free to share memories and media in the comments below. If I get enough, who knows, maybe I can do part two. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and if you have the means, please consider becoming a patron over on Patreon. We have a bunch of nostalgic videos just like this one, other series as well. Get access to those for as little as five bucks a month. We are 100% viewer supported, so if you like what we do and wanna help keep these videos, Sleepcore coming out regularly and get a ton of exclusive content in return, please consider supporting us, patreon.com slash picksandportraits. As always, thank you all so much for your interest in this channel and thanks for watching. Remember, be kind, Rewind. Thanks, everybody.